questions, comments, tomatoes? Well, I, I have a question for you. I mean, a, a fundamental theme of all this, uh, of your presentation, is that things are getting worse and have been, you know, over the last 30 or 40 years. And the question I have is, what is the evidence that you offer that they are, in fact, getting worse? Okay, the question basically is, what is the evidence that things have been getting worse in the area of peer review, knowledge, quality, and so forth? And I think that is a very legitimate question. We don't have the data. I mean, has somebody gone out there and done what Zimmer has done, saying, okay, out of X number of journals, we've had so many retractions for this reason and so forth. Has, did, has somebody done that, let's say, for 1970, 1960, all the way back? Uh, you, I think you can only at this stage, look at an somewhat anecdotal evidence, things like Zimmer's article, some of the things you see in the society, I look at the space stuff, for example, the quality of things, it is, some, it is subjective. Has it, gotten, has, it, has it gotten worse? I think you can do, and I don't have the data, and I would wish I did. Let's say even the last 20 years, or let's take a look at, let's take a look at we can look at some of the educational stuff, like the nation at risk. We, can, we know that there haven't been really any changes since 1983 in the, in the school system. We have not improved the reading levels, math scores, or much of anything else. We can see some of the data. And it's only, it's somewhat, I'm not saying it's anecdotal, but I think it's supportive that, for example, how many uh, graduate students do we have in, science, in the sciences? And uh, so, yeah, I know it's, this is not much to go on, but I see all, I see there's enough commotion about peer review out there. We see all the fraudulent, there's more of an opportunity for this kind of stuff to happen, like the fraudulent degrees. Term, uh, so you say subjectively, yeah, well, given the fact that, yeah, I can go out and buy a paper on the internet where I couldn't do that 30, 40 years ago. You say, okay, what, you look at the genetic predisposition toward not telling the truth. You say, you put this stuff together, it's somewhat subjective. That is there a tendency for this kind of stuff to happen? But I think you've got a very valid point. What are the data to show that peer review is going in the tank? I don't know. Well, it's it's not just peer review. I mean, it's the, you know, the I mean, because basically your theme was much broader. Yeah, yeah, than yeah, yeah. It is. Peer review. I mean, there's always been cheating in the 1950s. Yeah, is it sure? Yeah, but Ted Kennedy hired someone to take a Spanish exam for him at Harvard. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. You know, this is, and he became, you know, the senior, highly revered senator, you know, from Massachusetts. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, if you take uh, a look at educational statistics, you know, what has happened to IQ test raw scores, say, since the 1950s? Well, we don't know if some of those things have been shifted in terms of the standards used. I, right. I, I, they, yeah, they, 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 to, we, we've dumbed it down. No, no, that's not correct. It's that's the right. opposite. Well, that's what uh, I was if doing. they took the tests in the 1950s that they took, if, if we gave someone a 50s test and scored it now, the average IQ would be 115. Uh, what they've had to do is they've had to reduce it because by definition, the average score of an IQ test is 100. Uh, so we've actually done, we're doing better on those tests. Now it's been fairly stable since the late 1980s, yeah, yeah. but stable is not the same as going down. Uh, you know, you know, only in, in government budgeting do we assume that a cut in the rate of growth is actually a cut. Uh, so that uh, we also have an education system that has become vastly more inclusive. Uh, many, many more people and a more diverse group of people are being educated, which is, you know, a challenge. I mean, you're, you're, you extol the virtues of the Mexican school system, but how well has that worked for Mexico? I think it has worked for the well for the people who have gone through the school system. I'll give an example at Louisiana State. We had open admissions. I had 45 come into the logic course. I think maybe 9 or 10 actually exited the course. And that was the case with most of these open admissions courses. They come in and the, they get in pretty much over their heads. I look at the quality of writing, again, somewhat subjective, look at the, look at the quality of writing that you get, people, the, 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 the lack of critical thinking. I, you, I, the data, again, it's somewhat subjective, what I've encountered in the classroom, what 
this peer review stuff coming to the surface. I think there is an issue of reportage. The standard, the, what was reported 50 years ago, what's being reported now, I do see like the, can I get back to the Carnegie report and so forth. I see the nation's report card where people are comparison to, I think we're 27th in the world in math, something like that. I see stuff like this emerging. I think it would be good to see a system. I imagine there are systematic studies out there. I just took this stuff here just to uncover the issues of peer review itself. But yeah, I, admittedly, it's, uh, it was somewhat in a depressed mood when I wrote this. But I, uh, yeah, I, I take credit for that. But it's what I've encountered in teaching, what I've encountered in, so again, it's subjective, I, I, I confess. that like you were saying, the bar is continually raised, the bar is getting higher and higher, and yet as human beings, our time has been segmented into so many pieces. We're expected to be uh, good at teaching and research and service, and, and we now have to do the internet, and our email is overwhelming us, the number of phone calls, we don't have secretaries that do the things that they used to do, the number of articles that are expected, so the numbers are getting higher and higher, Nobody talks about quality much anymore. They're just looking and counting how many things you have. You're also expected to be a good father, a good mother, and, and happy and healthy and well-balanced. And, you know, people are getting four hours of sleep, which decreases their ability to write a decent article. And then the reviewers themselves are so segmented that they have too much to do. And so they take a cursory glance and they go, okay, this person is, we know him, so we'll just pass it through. So they don't take the time. So nobody anymore has time to do quality work or quality review. So that's one of the problems that has to be solved before we can even get to the issue of peer review and how well we're doing all this. Well, the question basically was, given the increasing uh, pressures on people that we look at the issue of peer review itself, how much time people have to devote to it and so forth. I think there's another thing that I might couple with that. I think this was written about in the 60s, but I certainly will raise it as the issue as things become more complex. Now think of even 30 years ago that I had one of these, I have an iPod, I, whatever the hell it is you have to, have to have, all the technological stuff and the complexity that you see out there. How, even as the species, how capable is the species itself able to deal with that kind of complexity as a whole? The average public is subjected to all these devices, things, whatever, and concepts themselves. And in the best and the brightest, supposedly, are generating all this stuff. What is the capability of the average population to deal with these types of things? And then you have the avoidance. You have psychological factors. You say, okay, well, I can't really deal with that. So I'll do this, that, and the other, compensate, or whatever. I'll, I'll turn a turn paper in, or whatever it may be. All I, I could see, getting somewhat back to your question, is I take a look at, you go on plagiarism.org, and again, it's one of these things, again, I think it would be good to do the research, and I don't know if, I don't know if it's out there. It may be, just about everything else is, but maybe this is. But you see the figures, like 30% of all the, uh, the admissions of the students, how many people plagiarized, the cheating and so forth, 30% of all the papers turned in are plagiarized and so forth. I don't know what that figure was 30, 40, 50 years ago. I'm not sure if there were attempts to even collect that data. So I say that, you know, I, I, I see it, I see it, 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 the problem is there. And I subjectively think it may be getting worse, given what my values were and how I was raised and what the other students were doing in class. We didn't really have these major discussions about cheating and plagiarism. All I know was back then in college and in, in, in back then, you don't plagiarize you, and people really didn't do that. Now, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I just had my head where the sun doesn't shine and maybe that did happen. I don't know. I wish I, I, wish I did have the data. years ago, how many deans of MIT would have been made to resign if somebody just, once you had MIT dean, I don't know how many of you will say, let's look at the resume whether they're truthful or not. So, because that is your, so, um, it's like sexual harassment. Sexual harassment is now, we can't say incidents are higher. I think maybe 50 years ago they were much more, 
But yeah, that would be yeah, that would be the case there. Obviously, the value is there. Sure. And, you know, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have become aware of. Earlier, we said, okay, he's a dean of, or she is dean of MIT. That's excellent. Nobody can even think. That yeah, you had a question back there, and then you. Uh, well, first is, um, wait, um, on the more narrow uh, scope of things, I'm interested in uh, basic reviewability. So for, I teach in computer science, and yeah. as I'm having to evaluate my students' work, which of course is an element <coughs> of science review, sure. uh, the more mathematical, the more computational, the more uh, writing programs it is, the very much happier I am with it. The more writing, the more trying to put out opinions and justify them, the harder it is. So I would contend that some, yeah, the rocket, the rocket blows up on launch or it takes the payment of the uh, There are, I feel that in the more quantifiable fields, more objective peer review is more possible. And, and sort of the softer and fuzzier the field, the harder it becomes. Would you comment on that? Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the reasons why I'm a logician. I, even though I do, my classes require, I don't have objective tests. I have essays. I try to combine them. But I think there's that issue, again, it gets back to the saying, how do you evaluate the writing? You have the oral discourse with the term paper, whatever it is. It is much more, but there are, there are basic standards, though, regardless of the style. You can't, there are certain things like sourcing and so forth and logical argumentation. So it, it is worse rather than in the discrete disciplines like math and the physics and so forth. I guess there is the scale of precision. You start off with the mathematics and then you go to the physics and the chemistry, biology, and you get fuzzier and fuzzier and fuzzier until you get into the art and you get pure aesthetics, anything goes. I think that's pretty much, I, there's a name for that, but there's a progression of precision that people use. And it's gonna get harder and harder. I mean, what is art? We can, I, I, we can go there, but we won't. So I, yeah, I, I appreciate the problem in terms of you get knowledge, quality, and so forth. How do you apply it to something like that? I don't know. You, you, and then you. Thank you. A very interesting presentation. I have a few comments from Europe, you know, about this academic honesty and something like that. Sure, sure. For example, uh, uh, citation. You know, if you should decide if you want to become a associate professor, professor, another citation, journal, or something like that. But nobody is checking. What kind of citation? If you write about my paper that is rubbish, doesn't matter. It is that important that I have citation from you, <laughs> from American scientists, okay? Yeah. Or let's say it is, a, it is a requested that you have to have five publications in the international conferences like this. But it doesn't need to be here. It is as enough that you send paper. Maybe somebody written a, that paper in English for you. And nobody is checking if it was by you written or not. Then it is published here in the publication, and it's okay, it is counted, you know. So you have foreign language publication, and you have to have, it seems to me, five or six, something like that, and 30 citations, but it's just enough if we make agreement that I will cite you and you will cite me, and you make five citations for me, and I make five citations for you, and that's it. No, it doesn't matter what is the content of it's the citation. It's a numbers game, yeah. And most important is that you don't need to mention anything in the text about my publication. It's just important that in the list of, of uh, publication it is mentioned that Sotis has written this and that's it. It's and you are a professor. There's a, there's, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a thing in science, I've seen articles about this, about citation indexes, yeah. indices. You don't, you don't need to yeah, yeah, they're, they're garbage. It doesn't, doesn't show anything. Yeah, yeah. For example, now we have a minister who has a doctorate in law, and he couldn't remember after 10 years, because he finished in evening classes, what was the thesis, the title of his thesis. <laughs> hey, all this, it, 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 I just want to become a Buddhist, go the hell out in the cave and eat worms, cross my legs and be done with it. 66, I got about 30 more years of my life and that'd be over. You got a question? Yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, this has been a very interesting presentation, but it seems to me that there are Long. really two uh, two pieces to it. One was the general problem of dishonesty or, you know, problems in our culture or various cultures with being, you know, having academic integrity and all this kind of thing. Um, putting all that aside, the specific problem with establishing and maintaining a particular methodology for peer review, 
seems to be a central question. So my question is this, and while we've been talking, I've been doing a Google search here on what sort of peer review methodologies or standards actually exist out there. And I've only found one. Um, and I was wondering if you're familiar with this and what you thought about, you know, because in your presentation you talked about starting this organization as something that could you be used to establish standards for peer review, yeah. uh, sta peer review standards and methodology. This is the seventh International Congress on Peer Review and Biomedical Publications, founded by JAMA, the Journal for American Medical Association. And that's going to be in September of yep. this year. Yep. And I was wondering if you're familiar with that, and if I'm you know, I, I'm stunned that there isn't something like this for the scientific community in general. I, I saw that, and I started reading it, and I was in a rush, rush as usual, started reading it, and I am familiar with that. Of course, I can't attend it, but I've seen that, and I thought, yeah, why not? I mean, we had this KGCN here. Uh -huh. And we tried it several times to get the stuff off the ground, try to get people in interested and so forth. So is the problem with establishing a generalized standard something because institutions all have their own practices and it's hard to get them together? Well, I guess it starts off with just stuff here. I mean, I go and I, 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 what, is, what is knowledge anyway? You get on Google and you try to find things and so forth. What kinds of, generally, I think there is a general set of things you do. Like, I had passed this, out this paper to my students, information and source integrity. Do you look at the date of the article? Do you know who wrote the thing? Where you got the stuff? Just basic stuff, not even the content. I teach logic, and you say, okay, well, then I can go into a logical analysis. We won't even touch that right now. I'm just talking about basic stuff. How you put a thing like that together? What kinds of sources are you using? So I think there are some general standards that apply to everybody. But I, I, I'm wondering then, I'm looking out there, the quality of what's being vetted, I don't know if even that is being done. I mean, stuff I learned in high school. I remember, I, again, Irene Dwally, I bless her soul, you know? So if she told me, I see, I see stuff out there, and I'll give you an example. You talk about, you talk, I, I think you've got a good question about statistics. I say, like the New York Times. I remember reading, I used to read that paper religiously. It's kind of do now. I think there's some other, it's a lot better. I see all the errors in the New York Times. Go through there, just pick up just basic stuff. Or CNN, I'll give you an example. CNN, I work for some newspapers. You go into CNN, this is a, a real offender. You go read the article, much of it's garbage. You go through, you don't even know where the thing took place. Who, what, when, or how, and why. First three paragraphs. First paragraph summarizes, boom, 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 elaborates, and then each paragraph after that elaborates. Now we have these human interest stories. You get it on the front page, and you don't even know where the thing took place. Basic stuff. I'm talking about basic information that's not only inaccurate. You look at the way science is rendered. I'm just getting so much subjective. I don't remember seeing this. Now, I pick up a copy of the New York Times. That was a newspaper record. You read that thing, you see the text of the documents of the Supreme Court case, you don't see it anymore. It's garbage. It's coming it's come like tabloid. Yeah, I'll read Al Jazeera. You're damn right I do. I think the time is turn, turn, yeah. turn into, it's all right. I have a question related to this question. Yeah. But I would like to ask your opinion, but everyone has opinion, and not just here. Yeah. Uh, I ask, we ask you, please give us your opinion in after this conference in the uh, blog that we got for that. The question, the main question I have, I have a lot of questions about this problem. But the main one is really sometimes I cannot sleep. 92% of the scientists knows that peer reviewing is not working. Yeah. The 92%, this is, the, that was an interview in the largest, with the society with the largest number of scientists. The 92% answered is not working. So my question is, why there are just few people caring about this problem? May not think it's a, a real it's problem. Yeah, it is. It's a real problem. So the problem is not the problem, but that few people are caring about this problem and they continue believing in peer review. So that's the question that I find no answer, not even a potential answer to what's going on. 
So if any one of you have an opinion with regard to this issue, why? So at the risk of being more cynical than Jared. Uh oh, <laughs> is, what, I'm an optimist. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know also the other about the land, the other article that was in 1990. That, that's 20 years old, but there's something even more of the what 2000 whatever it is I put there. So it's yeah. an ongoing thing. There's there's your data continuity there. The, the I do like your question. The junior faculty have neither the time nor the political capital, and the senior faculty don't give a crap. Why? <laughs> Why? Because they've made it already. Why should they? I said, Only for their own students once they start having students. And by that point, so they don't want to fight the system the because then their students won't get So the get. answer is lack of integrity, intellectual integrity. Absolutely. Intellectual honesty, that's the answer. All right, before you answer, because I got, I, got I got another answer to your question. Now, you talk about the trends. Now, here's the p community college system. Uh, the thing that has changed, and I do know this, and anybody who's taught in a community college knows the drill. It's called full-time service equivalent, okay? That's where it's pretty much the case. Now, in the community college, you're supposed to fill up the class. Everybody, you remember, you remember that we had the track system? I'm kind of, a, I'll be quite frank with you. I don't give a damn what it sounds. I like the track system, not a rigid one. I like what I call a mobile one. People at the beginning are kind of evaluated. You're pretty much oriented toward vocation. You're pretty much oriented toward college. That could change. If somebody halfway through the end becomes, okay, I've become a genius late in life, yeah, I can change. But I like the track system because people, you give people the right expectations. I really want to be a carpenter. I, we, want, we need these good people. That stuff is just as valuable as what we do. Why not have trade schools? We lost that. So that's one thing we lost. We had all this stuff that came up in the 60s. Everybody's equal now. Everybody can go to college. Now we have the community college. We opened it up for everybody. So you've got to dumb it down. Thank you. I'm happy. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just deaf as a post. I've gotten really bad in the last A year. society that values bad philosophy, because philosophy is a praiseworthy occupation, and devalues good plumbing, because plumbing is a base trade, will find that neither its pipes nor its theories hold water. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you a question on the heel, but you see, you see what I'm saying? That these, these, I don't, it's not the data, but it's right. what's happened. It's half what's happening with the institutions that you dumb down everything. Anybody can get a PhD. Why did, why, did, why did Cornell talk about the chancellor degree? Evidently, PhDs have gone kind of to hell. Just about anybody can get one. See, look at me. <laughs> I got my foot in my mouth. Go for it. Well, I was just going to I'm give my response out. to the Jim's question, which is that peer reviewing is a classic example of a paradigm, uh, a shared belief. And, uh, you know, according to Kuhn, never in the history of science has a paradigm changed without two things. Everyone knowing the paradigm is wrong. We've met that condition. But finding a better Sounds substitute for the paradigm. When we find a better substitute for peer review, then I think that there is a decent chance. But until we then do. Let me change my question. Why so few people are trying to find the solution? Because it's hard. That's well, right. It's a hard, hard problem. problem. Let's let's say though. Let's say let's let's say though we did introduce a real curriculum in the schools. A real curriculum that we require these kinds of things. So you you're raised on these things like you are your mother's milk. Everybody, you come out of the schools. You come out of the schools, you know philosophy, you know how to discord. I don't mean you need to be a Plato or an Aristotle, but at least you can handle the basic discussion. Then you, I, I can tell you from experience, from a philosopher's point of view, that is really interdisciplinary. You talk, I talk about the polyam, I'm not saying I'm knowledgeable in anything, I, I only walk on water, but you know, you get exposed to these other things. And so you, you, you talk about the natural philosopher, the say, of the 18th century. What was the natural philosopher? The one who is obvious, obvious, started off to be a philosopher because I want to know who I am and why I'm here. But then you take off in some area. And then this is what they're beginning to do in some of the philosophy departments. A lot of these uh, people who are in, in philosophy graduate are taking on physics or some other discipline in addition. 
And so you become more diverse. You take the philosophy and then, quote, apply it in these other areas. You have, for example, Florida State University. And you have applied philosophy. You may, you, you come from the Florida State, you, uh, you probably are familiar with that, with that system, Journal of uh, Social Theory and Practice. And they still have, I forget what the, exactly, something like that. And they have applied philosophy. So how are you going to use a philosophy? So you become a natural philosopher. But I think if you start off with that premise that you get that instead of all this junk there in, in the schools, you get a real curriculum, and then you can start off with that. Then I think that part of that question would be answered, then more and more people would realize what peer, peer review is. not simply like uh, uh, putting down somebody. I think that's what people kind of, so there's, there's this, this idea out there that if you peer review somebody, you're just slamming somebody. It's a, and I think we have a problem in the culture of this being a competitive culture rather than being a cooperative one. I think it's just the very nature of what we see, the very systems that we develop. They're reflective of that mentality, that competitive, and I'll say destructive competitive mentality. So people see that peer review, oh, boy, I'm going to have to slam that guy and, and put him in the mud or her in the mud. I think it's part of the problem. And it's this ego thing. It's, it's, it's sort of like the solving society. We want everybody to have a happy face. Nobody wants to be unhappy. Let us suppose that we have honest, ex honest, true experts doing the reviewing, honest and c constructive, charitable. Yeah. I can evaluate how good the arguments are. If it's in a technical field, I can evaluate how good the methods or the proofs or whatever are. I can. Uh, look to see that the references that I know are well cited and maybe I can even track a few. I know some references I've seen in the past and I can say, you know, you forgot this or did you know this happened? But how can I keep up with the breadth of the literature and know, I mean, I can't. The best I can say is from my knowledge, this appears to be new work and appears to be decent. That's actually Okay, so something that's being developed, and there was a presentation on it earlier today. I know, the, the personal right. matching. But uh, technologies are being developed which can do literature searches and text searches far better than humans can do. Yeah, yeah. And it's being used in the legal field, it's being used in the accounting field. That's something that could be incorporated into the peer review process so that right. somebody's literature review could be put through this kind of algorithm and it could be. Uh, vetted that way. F find important missing sites, find yes. important co that's concepts that haven't right. been covered. Because whatever. the amount of information that's out there is far broader than any human can. Information I yeah. think there's, it gets into the point basically of facts versus the object versus the process. Yeah. And I think you could talk about facts all day. And I tell, like, I, ha I don't have my students memorize everything, it's all open book. I want them to have a good methodology, though. I want to know how they got there. And they better show me how they got there. And they, there are some professors who do this. If you do a math problem, you know the drill. Okay, well, I don't, you may have the wrong answer, but the way you got there is as, just as, if not more important, as the answer itself. Right. Because it could be a typo, it could be under something stupid. That Correct right, answer yeah, right, without right. reasoning is worth nothing. Exactly. So <laughs> I, want, I want to know the process. I want to know how they got there. And I think that's what we really need to develop more of. Everybody wants the fact. The fact. I don't give a damn about facts. They change. I want to know the process, scientific methods, or historic, history. And then we talk about disciplines. We talk about the interdisciplinary. I want to raise this issue about this. You say, oh, okay, you talk about all these disciplines. I can sit here and I can have a discipline of vacuum cleaners. And I've just demonstrated how I can have a whole degree called vacuum cleaner degree. But we can keep doing that all day and subdivide like the uh, Cartesian down to the quantum level. However, I think it might be the interdisciplinary, it's the discipline of methods. Historiography, scientific methods, uh, whatever other methods out there. I think that is the interdisciplinary part. Because everybody's going to have their own pet whatever they do. I'm a physicist, you're a chemist. Okay, fine, but you do it. Uh, do you appreciate the method of historiography? In other words, you know the history of chemistry, the history of computers. You know the scientific methods. You know mathematics. You certainly go to mathematics. So do I know all these? Can you, can you talk interdisciplinary with respect to method? Not facts, but method. Can you apply those methods to your field? I think that would be so. You get a process-oriented learning. But I think, Jeremy, there are two aspects to improve well, to optimizing peer review, even if you can't get rid of it. One is to improve the resources open to the reviewer and the editor. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And the yeah. other is to do a better job of matching reviewers. Yeah, absolutely. 
And I think that has to do in part with something I was talking to Najib about yesterday, and that's we don't have a unified set of keywords. We don't have a unified hierarchy of yeah, yeah. ideas so I can try to match reviewers and people are too busy. I mean, the same busy. Yeah, you know, and that's another thing. How do, you, how do you set up a system where people can go ahead and it's all volunteer? And how do you get a system where people are rewarded for doing their communal, communal service again? It gets back to the first talk in a very different well, sense. Well, it might be, again, adopting that aspect of the Mexican system, let's say the professors, then they do the community service of being peer reviewers. You yep. make that part of the part of the drill. You want to be a professor here? That's what you do. You got to review X number of papers in this blah, and blah, field. the editors have to say they're quality, capable reviews, exactly. not yep. just nonsense. Exactly.